Actually, I think if I saw a ghost, I probably would be afraid. If I, if I saw one like they haven't been in movies, you know. Uh, I think when we see them, it's usually uh, there's, a, there's a noise or there's something just a little weird. But if they actually showed up like the Marshmallow Man, I think I'd be, I think I'd be afraid. Very intimidating, definitely. Now, when you first got a hold of the script for the original Ghostbusters film, what was your reaction to it? That, I guess you talked to a lot of people about, did you know it would be this big, but did you ever have a, you know, any, any, any feelings that, hey, this, this might be something here? Well, you know, I've been acting for maybe a little over 10 years. I started acting in the mid-60s, but I'd done a lot of stage shows, and the ambition was to finally get a big movie, because I heard when you get a big movie with a major studio, it could change your life. And so that was, and Ghostbusters was that big movie. Um, and when I saw the script, I thought, this is, this is, yeah, I have to do this, the most amazing thing. Um, the script went through some changes, which I'm sure you guys have probably heard about over the years, but, um, and it wasn't when we got ready to shoot the same script that I signed on for. But now, 30 plus years later, I look back and I think it's a perfect movie, and I think it was meant to be exactly the way it is. But, um, but when I first read the script, I thought, yeah. Uh, it, it was some challenges getting the studio to agree to see me in that, that same way. Uh, I did a movie, actually we shot part of it uh, in, here in Canada uh, called Space Hunter with Peter Strauss and Molly Ringwald uh, the year before. and. Um, uh, it's okay, I was in 3D and nobody could see it, but anyway, <laughs> we, we, uh, and I worked with Ivan Reitman, and I think they thought the character I played in Space Center would have been totally wrong for Ghostbusters, which I agree, but um, I don't think they realized that that was a character as opposed to me, and Winston's a very different guy, so. Now, going into that first film, and then now with the reboot, did you have any advice for the, the new cast, for the all-female the all -female Ghostbusters that just happened uh, last year? Well, I had a lot of advice, but I don't think anybody wanted to hear it. <laughs> you, know, you know, I said, you know, you really should have asked me about that before you did that. No, uh, no the girls were amazingly, they're funny people. And, um, you know, I just, uh, I was very happy that they decided to do something with the franchise because for almost 30 years we did nothing and we couldn't seem to find a way to come together again which I totally don't understand um, since everybody say they wanted it to happen but uh, so I was happy to see the girls do it um, I didn't think it should be a reboot I don't understand why a reboot uh, they said they didn't want the comparison but if you reboot then you're gonna naturally get comparisons and also I thought if it had happened 30 years in the you know like today, um, the girls would have been free to be themselves as opposed to doing some version of what we did. And, um, but that's just my opinion, so. Uh, I'm happy they did it, and I'm very happy that they, you know, paid me to do a small part. Um, and yeah, so it's so all good. Yeah, so there was a, a backlash. I know Leslie Jones, you, you play her father in the film, I'm not giving you too much away, but she was off Twitter for a while because people at the Ghostbuster fans, some of them were quite opposed to it. Yeah, yeah. That, uh, I know Leslie got a lot of, um, I, you know, I, I, don't, I don't even understand what that was about, but uh, I liked her in the movie, actually. Uh, sometimes, and I don't mean this in any disrespect, but Leslie can be pretty big sometimes, you know, in her work, and um, that's so totally not how I see or saw Winston when I played him, I didn't see him as that uh, guy. But uh, but when she did Ghostbusters, she really toned a lot of it down. I thought she was really one of the best things in the movie. I thought she was very funny, and uh, it was nice to see her take a little milder approach in some of the stuff I see her doing Saturday Night Live. But um, yeah, you know. Um, yeah, I, mean, it's all like, I don't know what else to say. Um, I like all the girls, I think they're all really very funny, but um, I, I just think they, and, and there's no criticism of Paul Fay. I think he had a vision, um, but it just wasn't kind of how I saw it. It was entertaining though, I thought it was very entertaining. Was it hard to get you back when you did the, 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 the offer the cameo role for you? Was that, was that a no-brainer that you're like, yeah, of course? You know, it's so easy to get me to do anything. I mean, we, you know, really, I'm not that hard to get. We usually have been announcing we're going to do another Ghostbusters. Every time they would announce it, they'd 
he just throw me in automatically. We got Ernie Hudson. I'm like, please talk to me about this. Um, you know, I'm easy. Pay me and I'm there. Um, so, but when they first came to me with Ghostbusters, it was like, it, it felt like I was asking them. I'm like, you know, guys, I mean, you're asking me, right? So, um, I mean, no. So it took them a while, almost at the end of the movie. I mean, I worked the last day of the movie for them to finally say, okay. Uh, you know, I mean, we know what's going to happen, but kiss me anyway, I mean. <laughs> I want to feel a little appreciated. Uh, so I'm glad I did it, but I, I just felt um, that their first approach to me was just uh, less than, you know, exciting. Well, before we throw to some audience questions, we do have a couple mics in the aisle. Now, I think we all know when it comes to ghosts and paranormal stuff, we know who to call. But I, I thought I would have to give you some other situations in your life, and, and I, want, I want to know who you would call in these situations, okay? So, let's see, okay, so we got, it's Friday night, neighbors having a crazy party, who, do you, who are you going to call? The neighbors having a crazy party? Real loud party, who, who you call it? Uh, the neighbor and find out why I wasn't invited. <laughs> Not invited. Can you turn it down? But if I am invited, uh, hey, it's all good. All right, so you've got two tickets to your favorite band. You have one extra seat. Who are you going to call? I got two tickets. Um, I'll be, well, I, you know, I, I got to call my wife and say, I got two tickets. Do you want to go? <laughs> Even though probably at the back of my voice is like, uh, you don't have to go. But uh, no, I, I, I call my wife first. And then, um, you know, then my brother. And, you know, then there's a whole, you know, um, yeah. yeah, yeah. I go through the list, yeah. yeah, yeah you know, I go through the list, um, you know, um, yeah. you know, you hate to go through the list and everybody turn you down. <laughs> because at, at my, at my age, I've never given a party because I'm so terrified that I'll throw a party and nobody will show up. I mean, that's, it's like the weirdest, and I know it's like, it's unreasonable, but it's like, I got this fear. Um, and then when I, I, I left to go, I went to Yale, and before I left to go to Yale, um, they, my friends who had been doing a lot of theater, but they threw this party for me. And I said, well, you know, I mean, I don't really, I'm that comfortable, I mean, because, you know, I said, oh, we're going gonna, we're gonna to have this script. And so they threw the party, and I went there, and it was like, just me and the person who threw the party, and I sat there for more like hours, and nobody showed up, and it just, uh, it was awful. And then I finally went home because I had to catch a flight the next morning, and, and then everybody said, oh, we came later on, it was a great party, but, uh, but it just intensified my, my fear of having a party, so. You might take from that that I don't have a lot of friends, but it, it's, uh, <laughs> All right, so how about this one? You get home late in the evening, you don't feel like making dinner. Who are you going to call? I get home late, well... You don't want to cook. You need to order something. Who are you going to call? Well, I never cook anyway, so... Uh, I, will, I will just say, if my wife doesn't want to cook, um, <laughs> you know... Um, yeah, I... Uh, yeah, yeah, well, yeah, I guess, I mean, I'm not... Um, you know, I, I don't know, I'm, I get kind of lost. I travel a lot, so I'm always confused as to where I'm going to eat. So I end up ordering room service or something, but um, yeah, I'm so used to somebody else doing something. So that question would be, uh, okay, well, you don't want to cook, then well, who are you going to call? Uh, I'm like, I, yeah, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm very bad at deciding because... <laughs> I'm afraid if I decide to call the pizza place, then she'll want something else, and then she'll eat it reluctantly, and then I'll feel bad because I called the pizza, so we're very gonna, indecisive. These questions are getting deep. I know. I got one more, though, for you. This is an easy one. All right. If there's something strange in your neighborhood, who are you going to call? Uh, strange in what way? I mean, sometimes strange in the bad. Whoa, something strange, like... Uh, <laughs> We don't need to call anybody. I got this. Uh, but uh, but if it's um, I don't know. Yeah yeah. Uh, I, don't know. I, was, I was tossing it up for you to say Ghostbusters, and you just don't want to. Oh oh. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh who are you gonna call the goat there? Uh, it's the it's the song. You know I mean, I'm wearing a t-shirt. It's a yeah. It's, a, it's in the song. I always think people want serious answers. 
<laughs> Let me tell you who I'd really call. <laughs> I sure would call Bill Murray and Dan Aykroyd. <laughs> Alright, so we've got audience questions in the aisle, so we'll start uh, on this side, and then we'll go back and forth, so let's, uh, we're, 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 I guess we're ready on that side. We're ready on that side, so let's start over there on that side. What is your question? I don't think they know what They're not ready, know. okay. Oh, there we go. I just wanted to ask, what was it like working with Brendan Lee, and do you have any stories? Um, with Brendan Lee, and the last part was... Do you have any good stories? Um... Well, you know, I knew Brandon for about eight years before he did the movie, and he was really a sweet kid. And I say kid because when I met him, he was really, really young. And, um, yeah, no, he was, you know, I love about Brandon. We did a pro reunion a few weeks ago, and Tony Todd was there, and Bailing, and uh, Rochelle. Um, Brandon, unlike most stars, had a way of, pulling people together and including everybody. I mean, it really made you feel like you were part of the movie. And that's kind of rare because there were a lot of people, they just, they'll do their scene and then they'll go right to their dressing room. They don't want to talk to certain people. But Brandon was so inclusive and that's what I really, really loved about him. And uh, it's very uh, hard to believe that that could happen. Uh, but I, I think he would have liked the movie and, uh, and I'm very, Thankful that I got to know him, um, but yeah, no, it's uh, yeah. There were I, one lesson I learned from Brandon. Uh, the the day before he died, we had dinner. My wife had just lost her brother unexpectedly, and we were flying back um, to take care of that. And Brandon was very kind uh, and, and and you know with her, but he and I got into a discussion about my career. And this was after Ghostbusters, about 10 years after Ghostbusters. And I was really frustrated and kind of, and he was telling me to hang in there because, and he used his career as an example. He had done all these movies that he wasn't thrilled about, but finally he was doing The Crow, that was his breakout role. He had just signed a three picture deal. He was getting married, they had just bought a home. Life was amazing and, uh, and you know, just hang in there. And the next day he was gone, and I read a script once and said, if you want to make God laugh, tell him your plans. You know, we never know, we just don't really know, we like to think we do. And, uh, and you know, that's the, the thing that, uh, you know, I mean, you have to accept life for what it is, but he was so young and he had so much potential. You know, a lot of people have come up in this convention and said how much they really miss uh, Harold Ramis. And, uh, and I knew too, Harold was an extraordinary talent. Um, but he lived a good life and he managed to do, he was able to do a lot of things. But Brandon was so, you know, so young and so kind. And, uh, and it just, it breaks my heart even now. Hi, Carl. Thank you. Thank you so much. Right over to you. Questions about Ghostbusters. How long were you guys covered in the marshmallow for that scene? Like, how long did it take? Yeah, the marshmallow thing kind of would never end. Uh, you know, we did it in New York, and where they dropped the marshmallow stuff, and so we had to wear it. And then when we were in LA shooting the interior stuff, we had to wear it uh, a lot. And so when you wear it, it was shaving cream. But after eight hours, it dries and they put more stuff on and it gets into the uniform and then it gets into your skin. And uh, Danny and Harold got rashes and Bill Murray just didn't want to wear it. So it was like, but, uh, but you know, it's, it, sometimes I think when you work on a film, like maybe most things in life, the things that are the hardest and most annoying are the things you remember. And it's also the things that sort of bring you closer together. You really feel like you share something. And um, and so the marshmallow makes. I'm forever close to those guys. So we, you know, we went through hell with that stuff. But uh, yeah, we think we'd be over it. And a few days later, we had to do something else with the marshmallow. Uh, the slide was probably about as bad, but uh, yeah, it was okay. Thank you. Sure. So every time you shave, do you get flashbacks then? <laughs> 
Because you're like, you're like, oh my god, remember that day? Yeah, I remember that time. Oh my god. <laughs> this was uh, everywhere. Yeah. But it's, yeah, it's in those, those jumpsuits, we get inside the suit and uh, not fun. Yeah. All right, back to the side. All right. Uh, Rini, who do you think is the best Ghostbuster? Wh which of the movies or? or uh, let's say all of them. Uh, so both the original and the newer one. Oh, oh we're comparing the movies, not the guys. You're going to say, who do I think is the best Ghostbusters? Uh, no, no, no. Uh, because I can tell you who I think was the best Ghostbusters. No. <laughs> no, the, uh, so which one? I, you know, honestly, I thought the first movie was more creative. I mean, I read the script and it was so just off the wall and so funny. And when I see the movie, um, it was just, I mean, it was just really unusual. So I love the first movie for its originality. The second movie I thought was much more family friendly. And so a lot of kids who grew up with the cartoon, um, I think they were, they were, it was much more accessible. You know, we had a Statue of Liberty, but it was like, you know. So I thought the second one was more family friendly. Uh, and a lot of people like it, but I thought the first one was just so unexpected and so original. So, so I like that one. We won't even talk about the third one, I mean, I say. Yeah. That's good. I actually meant uh I actually didn't mean the individuals um, among the two teams. Like, oh, I see. So there's a real life situation in yeah. which Ghostbuster would be the best. Yeah. Oh, which is the best Ghostbuster? Yeah. Who, who's the best at the job? Right. Who's the best at the job? The guys from the first one or the second? All together, right? You want to put everyone in, in one group? Yeah. New, new and old, everyone's in one room, and you got to pick one guy to go and save the day. We pick it. Well, I would have picked Harold. You know, he seemed to know he was doing it. If he didn't, he certainly pretended. I mean, he was, you know, he, he was a guy who I trusted. When we did the movie, uh, when, and because when you, making a movie is like working a job. I mean, it's it's fun in one way, but it's it's still like going to work, and you work with a lot of people who are unstable. <laughs> and, uh, and you have to adjust to that, and it's okay. I'm very good at adjusting, but... Uh, Sometimes things would happen, and Harold was always the go-to guy. I would look at Harold like, uh, and he'd go, Ernie, don't even, you know. Uh, so he would kind of explain that universe. Because they have been together on Saturday Night Live, and they had, they had worked together for years. But Harold was always the guy who uh, just sort of broke things down, and, you know. And he, Danny was excited about the ghost busting stuff, but Harold seemed to be able to make sense out of it, so definitely, definitely. Okay, thanks. Thank you. What was your reaction to the little, there was a little nod to Harold in the new film. Did you catch it? Yeah, yeah, they had a little bust of, uh, of Harold and, uh, yeah, it was nice. Is it nice, Harold? Yeah, it was, it was true. I was, yeah, I was wondering how they were going to do it. it. In fact, the first day on the set, when I, when we did the first, uh, um, Ghostbusters, uh, his daughter Violet, uh, was maybe about six, seven years old. And she was a sweet little girl, and we did the second shit. Growing up, you know, five years older, and she was sort of becoming a young lady, and um, um, and then, then of course, people become. So we did the uh, the third Ghostbusters, the first day of the movie. She had I had just had a baby, and she named Harold. Um, so it was Harold's grandson, um, who is now um, will star in the next Ghostbusters if we ever do one. I don't know if that's true, <laughs> but it was good to see little Harold. Life goes on. Cool. All right, back on this side. Hey, Ernie, nice to meet you. Hey, how you Mark. Doing? Good. Um, so my band covers the theme song for years, and we always end the song with the cute end is with your line, "I love this town." Right. And it's an iconic line. Did you get to improvise that? And if not, did you get to improvise any of your other awesome lines? Well, I was always a kind of odd guy out. You know, when we'd be doing the scene, and they would be kind of into their thing, and I'd be trying to contribute. You know, like they would be like, well, okay, we need uh, we need we need to put a button on this. What do we do? Uh, we need a line here, and um, and so they would throw out suggestions, and I would be standing there, and I'm like, well, why don't you say this? Let's go. And then they would kind of look at me, and then ignore me, and they keep talking. And then uh, Daddy would say, Hey, I got an idea. Let's say, let's go. And they go, Great idea. <laughs> well, I just said, let's see, you know, I'm thinking, you know. So it was kind of like, okay, where? So that scene, they were all doing stuff, and I'm like standing there. And so it's like, well, um, 
what did we do with Ernie? And uh, they said, well, uh, I don't know, Ernie, um, uh, see, I love this town. So, you know, and so that's how the, I mean, I don't know if it happened exactly that way, but this is how it felt. So I said, I love this town. And, uh, I'm sorry I didn't get a chance to see it in the new movie because I thought about it after the fact. I should have, when she had lost my hearse, and I should have said, I love this town. But at any rate, um, yeah, so it kind of came out of that. Uh, it wasn't written, but I'm amazed people, you know, when you do a movie and you say lines, you don't think anybody, first off, will people even hear this? let alone remember it. So that was one of those things that people say they love that line, and I go, wow, that's nice. It's the number one memorable line. It really breaks the tension at the end. And my oh, great. Good. Yeah. Yeah. great. Good, good. Thanks a lot. All right, thanks a lot. All right, back to the set. Hey, and I should probably give credit to uh, Billy, to the guys, because they were very, uh, the studio had to have them. And I was the, um, you know, I was the actor in the mix who was kind of not as important. So they were very good at sharing. And when I look at the first movie, uh, they really tossed me some great lines. You know, the Twinkie line, you know. Uh, um, and I thought that was, they were just very inclusive in a nice way. So, so I'll always be grateful for that. Hi, Ernie. Thanks hey, for coming. Thank you. Yeah, I was. Uh, I love so much of the stuff you've done over the years. Uh, going Berserk stands out in my mind. But um, I was wondering when you booked uh, your role on Oz. At that time, was it just like a paying gig, or did you realize how special that show would become? Well, every gig is a paying gig for me. Uh, <laughs> no, I said you know I, I said it because you know I was a single dad for the longest time, and uh, so work is work. So that's the first thing. But, um, but you also fall in love with the projects. Sometimes it's with the cast that people work in. And with Oz, I thought it was the most amazing group of actors. I mean, they really put things on. I mean, it was in a prison. I guess people do stuff in prisons that I can't even imagine. I was a warden. So my thing was like, don't even think about it. I mean, you know, uh, but I admired the actors sort of, you know, risking a lot. And, uh, and a lot of them have gone on and they, you know, they've established themselves, done great work, but I just thought it was a really, a, a wonderful place for actors to come and, 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 and work. So I love being on the show, but I really admired the actors in that. And Tom Fontana's a wonderful writer, but the first few seasons were really extraordinary. If you haven't seen Oz, you should, I mean, it was a really extraordinary series, especially for a time. But, uh, but the actors are great. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. All right, back to this side. Hi. Hey, hi. Um, I was wondering, when you were on the set of Ghostbusters, um, Dan Aykroyd and Carol Grimes and Bill Murray, they're all like funny guys. Did you guys like mess around and have fun, or was it more of a serious project on, on set? Well, yeah, no, I think we, you know, we joke from, especially Bill. Bill is really kind of loose and you can't kind of corral him that way into taking everything serious because it's it's just Bill being Bill. But, and you kind of got to go with the flow and go with wherever he's going with it. Daddy's a little bit more organized and prepared, but uh, but it was always fun. It was always kind of loose, and we, always, we laughed a lot. Um, I don't do practical jokes, and I don't play with people because it's like playing with kids. They don't know when to stop. <laughs> so... I don't go there. That's why I don't go drinking. You know, I mean, it's like, it's like you're gonna hang out with people you think you know them well, and then after they have a few drinks, and they really tell you what they really think about you.